guys, welcome back. LilyPie101 here. Today's video is going to be more so about balance talks in Dead by Daylight. It's about gins. I know, everybody talks about gins, as you can clearly see. Anyways, I've had ideas floating in my head for a while, but recently I've been thinking about it a lot since I've been seeing a lot more gins slow down in my games. Long story short, I feel like maybe gin slowdown needs to be looked at, specifically gin regression. So, the question that comes to mind is, should gin perks stack? Now, before I start digging into this, I'd like to clarify what I mean when I say certain terms. So, overall, gin slowdown, in my opinion, is just any sort of perk that slows gins down. So this includes perks like pop, corrupt, thrilling, ruin, and when I say regression, I mean perks specifically that regress the gins, such as Ruin, Eruption, Pain Reso, Pop, etc. Typically, when I play Dead by Daylight, I usually am streaming, and I usually use Survivor, with a few hours on Killer occasionally when I get tired of Survivor. Now, I have close to 5,000 hours at this point, and there's not much that really bothers me in the game, but I've gotta say, one of the most frustrating things is being forced to play an M1 simulator when Killer stack gin regression perks. And before anybody starts with it, I think there are plenty of other things on the survivor side that should be looked at, such as boons, gin layout, and survivor spawning points. For me, the most fun part of playing survivor is the chase aspect, but if I'm not on a chase, I will typically work on a gen unless I'm going for saves. But don't get me wrong, I don't typically care how other people play, but it could just be very frustrating for me and my team if we ran a a tug of war of sorts just because gin regression perks get stacked. It becomes incredibly boring and it often results in me either just going next or me just messing around until the killer downs me and my friends. At first, I speculate it's been getting this bad recently because the past four killers introduced have been heavily anti-loot and or gin slowdown focused and the majority are also from popular franchises. This starts with Nemesis from the Resident Evil DLC that was released way back in July 2021 followed by Pinhead, Artist, and now Sadako. The licensed kills from that lineup are also insanely popular, so we do have a large influx of newer players, especially Killer, that's undeniable. And with less experience, of course you want to take an easier way to play Killer. The options are there, so why not? So, as you can tell, unfortunately, these players end up crutching on these perks since they haven't really learned how to play yet, trying to make up for an absence of experience. I also noticed that a lot of the time, their chases turn out to be poor behind the crutch too, whether they chase me or my teammates, and that's not to be rude, just merely an observation. With these builds, it's almost as if killers have become skins instead of having unique play styles due to their different powers. Most never play into their power and make chases overwhelmingly boring, the thing that I love the most. A little sad to see when you love a good chase, really. Lastly, in my personal experience, whenever they don't win with these perks, they usually resort to tunneling and camping much more often to, again, make up for their absence of experience. So it creates a little bit of a boring side for both sides. Now, how can we fix all of this exactly? It's a little bit more complicated of a solution, but I split gender regression perks into two separate categories, along with a separate category for neutral gen slowdown perks. The two main categories for gen regression would be passive and active, and let me just go ahead and break down what I mean by passive and active. So, for passive, we have perks that you don't actually have to interact with the gen, such as Ruin, Surge, Pain Rezo. And for the active category, we have perks that you do have to interact with the gen, such as Call of Brine, Oppression, Pop, etc. And then for the neutral gen slowdown category, we have perks that don't regress the gen necessarily, but block off gens instead. So these include things like Corrupt, Deadlock, Merciless Storm. And in my opinion, neutral perks can be stacked at any given time, but I feel like you shouldn't be able to have more than one passive and more than one active. So basically limiting it to one passive, one active, and however many neutrals. So to better help us understand this, I actually ended up making a chart as well, but I did include Deadman Switch just because I did rework it earlier this year. So basically, 7 out of 14 gen slowdown perks that we have in game right now are actually from within the past year. And 3 
out of eight are gender brushed perks. Regardless, I have somewhat hope that this can change in the future for balancing the game, as we've already received an update that overhauled killer add-ons, killer and survivor perks, and gave us reworks for Race Kid Trapper and reworked Spirit's Power. This was sometime last year as well, around September 2021. It doesn't necessarily have to be this solution, but they could change the value amounts so that in certain situations, the stacks aren't as oppressive. I mean, they've done similar changes before, although on a much smaller scale, like when it came to Spirit and using Strider, because of how her power specifically made using Strider incredibly strong. But with my idea in mind, this means stack gym regression perks such as Ruin plus Surge, Pain Reso plus Surge, Ruin plus Pain Reso, etc. are unusable, and stacked active gym regression perks such as Pop plus Overcharge, Overcharge plus Call of Brian, Oppression plus Overcharge, etc. unusable as well. Meanwhile, usable stack gym regression perks would include Pop plus Ruin, Pain Reso plus Pop, Surge plus Pop, etc. So the main goal in mind for my idea is to just make it so that there's not as much gender aggression all at once, which I really feel like helps. And hopefully in the long run, this makes it so that survivors don't have to play in one simulator. And it also makes it so that killers actually learn how to play the fundamentals of killer and don't actually handicap themselves whenever they do decide to play other killers. And those are basically my thoughts for this video. If you guys do like the video, make sure that you like it. Also make sure that you comment some of your own ideas below or give me a critique if you feel like it and also don't forget to share it around i feel like having these healthy conversations in dvd is nice so i look forward to hearing other ideas I'ma make you pop like that. Make you pop like that.